All right, we're going to take a look at the last two challenge problems from challenge day number one of chapter C. So this one dealt with a firefighter that's on the ground, sees a fire break out in the window near the top of the building. There is voice contact between the ground and firefighters up on the roof. So what they don't show is that there are firefighters up here. So I'm just going to draw some stick people. Here are our other firefighters that are up on the roof that our firefighter on the ground can see. The angle of elevation to the windowsill is 28 degrees. So there's kind of some action going on in here with these angles. So really what they're saying is from the firefighter on the ground, when they look straight ahead at the building and then up, that's a 28 degree angle of elevation. The angle of elevation to the top of the building, so again, when the firefighter looks straight ahead, but then all the way up to the other firefighters at the top, that angle is this 42 degree angle of elevation. Uh, the firefighter is 75 feet away from the building and her eyes are five feet above the ground. What roof to window sill distance can she report to the firefighters on the roof? So let's clear out all this stuff here. Didn't mean to clear off my firefighters, so firefighters, thank you. Uh, so the roof to window sill distance, well that would be this distance right here roof to windowsill, we need to figure out that distance. Now, that distance is in this triangle, but this triangle isn't a right triangle, so we can't use just normal trig with it. So, there are two right triangles in this problem. There was this one here, the angle of elevation up to the fire, and there's the other one that we mentioned earlier, all the way up to the firefighters. So, if we have to find this vertical distance, well, we could find the vertical distances of those two right triangles, right? We could figure out what this distance here is, and we would call that, let's say, A. Uh, and then in the big triangle, we could find this whole distance. That wouldn't be so crazy with me. Let's try it again. There we go. We can find that whole distance, and we could call that, let's say, B. Well, then B would be nothing more than this x value plus this a value. So now we've made a relationship between all of our variables. b is equal to x plus a, or we could switch this around and say, well, x is really equal to b minus a. Okay, so let's start with, let's say b, the bigger value here. So again, that was in the big right triangle that used the 42 degree angle of elevation. So I want to know the opposite side. I know the adjacent side down here. So I would set up with tangent. So I have tangent of 42 degrees equals opposite that I'm calling B. You can call it whatever you like. Just don't call it the same variables that you're already using elsewhere. Uh, over the adjacent, 75. We would multiply the 75 over to the tangent, 42 degrees. And I'm going to round these to the nearest tenth. So I got 67.5, and this is in feet. All right, so there's part of my problem. I know this now is 67.5. I need to subtract away this other distance from the, root, or from the building up to the fire. So now in that triangle, now I'm going to use the 28 degree angle of elevation, and I still get to use tangent because I want to know the opposite and I get to reuse this 75 as the adjacent. So now new ratio, tangent of 28 degrees is equal to the opposite. Now I'm in this right triangle is A over the adjacent 75. Again, multiply the 75 over to the tangent 28 and I got A to be 39.9 to the nearest tenth. If you wanted to round these to the nearest whole number, it's fine. It doesn't stay anywhere in the problem how to round the answer. So I'm just going to go with a tenth. So now I can take 67.5 minus 39, that's a 9, I promise, 9.9. .9, and that would leave me with x, this distance here, which comes out to be 27.6 feet. And again, I rounded to the nearest tenth just because I wanted to. And that is the second to last challenge problem. The last challenge problem is the one involving the rectangle. So the rectangle was 80 by 20, 
let's draw in here, this is 80, and this is the 20. And so I drew in some extra stuff. Uh, the diagonals are drawn in. Some things that you don't quite know yet, but we will get to in the future, is that all of these diagonal pieces, all four of these, are congruent to each other. Uh, that would be something that I would tell you in a problem at this point, since we haven't got there. Uh, and the other thing is, if I were to draw in the height of this triangle right here, if I were to make a perpendicular height to this base of 80, then we talked about that since these two adjacent sides are congruent to each other, then the altitude or the height here will bisect the 80 into 40 and 40. The other thing that's happening is the... Uh, intersection of the diagonals is directly in the center of the rectangle so we can even take this 20 for the the width or the height whatever you want to call it here and this value would be 10. Now going back to the bisection of the base not only is the base bisected but also this angle up here and let me kind of clear this off real quick. This entire angle right here, which is the same as Y, gets bisected. So this angle and this angle are congruent to each other. So I'm going to call these W's, for instance, just because. So really, in the end, Y is equal to two W's, because both of these W's together, W plus W, would be the same thing as this vertical angle Y. So now what I get to look at is I've created some right triangles with some side lengths. And so in this right triangle, I have an unknown angle, W, and I know the opposite side is 40, and I know the adjacent side is 10. So that's a tangent ratio. So I would set up this problem as the tangent of what I call W is equal to the opposite over the adjacent, and to solve for tangent, or to solve for w, sorry, I would take the inverse tangent of both sides. So w is equal to the inverse tangent of 40 over 10, which is the same thing as 4. You could just type into your calculator. And so to the nearest degree, I get that w is equal to 76 degrees. So that means this angle here is 76 degrees, but so is the angle right next to it which means all together, plugging in 76 into W here, Y, the angle above it, its vertical angle, is 2 times 76. So that makes Y equal to 152 degrees. Now the relationship between X and Y is that they are supplementary because they are on a straight line. So to find X, we can find the supplement of the 152 degree angle, which would be 28 degrees. And there's our final answers for X and Y.